Phoenix and Six. Half the bucks in the series. You're delusional. Your basketball card should be revoked. I need to see more. Yo. You, you Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Sports Sanders 80. I am Dear Sounds. Welcome back to the show. Today, guys, we have another banger NFL episode today for you guys. And we have another episode with a special guest, our editor and producer, TD, back again on the show. And uh, last episode, TD, we did our NFC playoff prediction. Today, we're doing the AFC. And so far this season, it seems like the AFC has been more interesting when it comes to playoff contention and play in the playoff picture than the NFC in uh, this year. Um, there have been a lot of teams that have been in the playoff mix in throughout the, throughout the remaining games of this NFL season. The AFC teams could go either way, so T, I'm going to give you the floor. Um, what is what is your playoff picture for the AFC this year? So, I'm glad to be back again. Uh, uh, to kick it off, my seventh seed in the AFC is the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the Bengals, in my opinion are the most surprising team in the league. Uh, I had tremendously low expectations for them this season since, you know, they're a very young team. QB is coming off a long-term injury, and they are one of the – and they also are in one of the toughest divisions, the uh, NFC North. But despite the, the those disadvantages, they, they played great so far. Uh, leading the pack. It's Joe Barrow and his uh, former college teammate, Jamar Chase, who has my vote for Offensive Rookie of the Year. They also have Joe Mixon, who is has been a very underrated player in the league. Um, they have a – they also have – to go along with those offensive weapons, they also have a top five run defense. But one of their major downfalls – is their pass defense, who is the tw- who is around 27th in the league. Uh, this will prove to be a problem when come playoff time, especially in the AFC. This can have so many good teams that like to pass the ball, like the Chiefs, the Bills, the Chargers. And also, as, they, as I said earlier, um, they're very young, and I don't think they're ready to win or even go deep in the playoffs. Moving on to my sixth seed, the Chargers. The Chargers have played exceptional, I would say, beating teams like the Chiefs and the Bengals. Uh, the, one of the main reasons they are as good as they are is because of their top three passing attack and their top five defense, passing defense. But on the flip side, one of the reasons they aren't as good as they could be is because of their trash run defense being second worst in the league. Uh, that just won't cut it in the playoffs, especially against teams like the Ravens. That's one of the reasons I don't think they're ready to take it all this year. The other reason I don't think they're ready because similar to the Bengals, they have a QB that's not used to that environment. Yeah. I have the Chargers as my sixth seed. On to my fifth seed. Surprisingly, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, they've been an absolute roller coaster of a team. Uh, beginning of the season, I actually had them going to the Super Bowl, but now, you know, I just don't know. They go from like losing games to like the Jags, where they only score six points. And losing to the Colts, which was a 26-point blowout, and also just recently losing to the Patriots. But uh, since they have a relatively light schedule, I would say, they managed to win some games and stay competitive. I honestly don't know what's the problem with this team uh, because they have the number one ranked defense and a top five offense. They have all the talent in the world, but, like, yeah, I just don't know what's the problem with this team. Uh, moving on to my fourth seed, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Titans weren't on a bad pace. Even some good teams like the Chiefs, the Rams, the Bills. But sadly, their most powerful weapon 
Derrick Henry got hurt. Be out for the rest of the season. Uh, I think how big of a I think because of how big of a piece Derrick Henry is to this team, how much he contributes. I think losing him uh, cut down their chances by a lot. I don't really think there's a chance that they make a that deep of a playoff run. And really, the only reason I have them making the playoffs is for one, they're in the sorry division. Their division is pretty bad. Uh, they also don't have many tough games ahead of them, uh, other than maybe like the 49ers and the Steelers, who I don't even have making the playoffs. Well, I have the 49ers stuck in the playoffs, but not the Steelers. And I have them both losing to both of those teams. On to my third seed, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the Ravens, they've played pretty impressive this season, considering they are in the AFC North, which is one of the toughest divisions in football. Uh, a lot of their success is to do with their franchise QB, Lamar Jackson, who is playing like an MVP candidate. And the fact that, and also the fact that they have the best scoring defense in the league. Uh, but a major issue they will have is stopping the pass. They're uh, damn near the worst team when it comes to stopping the pass. And um, if they face teams like the Chiefs and the Bills, uh, I could see them losing to them if they don't get get it together. But I can also see them being uh, making it all the way, considering how weak the AFC is this season. Uh, moving on to my second seed, the New England Patriots. They have beat some good teams like the Bills and the Chargers. And I can see see uh, them winning almost the rest of their game, except maybe the Bills. A lot of their success is due to their defense, who for sure is top five. And their great coach, Bill Belichick. <laughs> Uh, their rookie QB, Mac Jones, has been solid considering who he's throwing to, which should make the Patriots uh, fans excited for the future. But Mac Jones is also one of the main worries on the team because he is a rookie going into the playoffs, and the defense intensifies uh, come playoff time. And I just don't think he's ready. Like as I've stated before, with the charges and the Bengals, I'm just not a strong believer in young QBs on playoff time. Moving on to my number one seed, the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, where people would expect them to be probably in the beginning of the season, around one or two. Uh, but even this is not the way they probably expected them to get here. They had a very rough start, starting uh, being around like three and three. They still are having some problems with teams they probably shouldn't have problems with, like the Packers game where they didn't have Aaron Rodgers and only managed to win 13 to seven. And the Giants game where they only won 20 to 17. Uh, They have a below average defense uh, with them being around 20th in rushing and 24th in passing. They also have a pretty mediocre run run offense, being 19th. But one of the bright spots on this team, which is pretty expected, uh, is their top five passing. Uh, they also don't really have a hard game. They don't really have hard games coming up. Uh, with their hardest game probably being like the Chargers or the Bengals. So I can see them honestly winning out the rest of uh, their season game, regular season game. I can see them possibly going to the Super Bowl easily, but with the head scratches they've had this season, I can also see them losing in the upset. And that's my AFC playoff prediction. That's it. Giving the floor to you, Derek. Um, Tiki, uh, our lists are pretty similar. Well, 
not the order, but as far as the teams that we see making the playoffs this year, they're they're pretty much all the same teams. Um, starting with my number seventeen, uh, my number seventeen, I have um the the Chargers. I see a very explosive offense, but a very mediocre defense. And when I look at the offense, I look at so many great players outside of Justin Herbert, who is leading the league, I believe, in 300 plus yard games passing this season. He has like seven this season, which is most of the NFL. And you have targets like in the backfield with Austin Eckler, who is having a pretty great season this year. And you have receivers like. Uh, like Keenan Allen, like Mike Williams, and Mike Williams is probably, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are probably like one of the best wide receiver duos in the league, and, you know, you get the coaching job that the coaching staff has done for the Chargers is remarkable, but defensively, I look at the talent the Chargers have defensively, you have a lot of talent from Chris Harris Jr., uh, they have Darren James, who, who, who came off of a injury, who, which prohibited him from playing Zero games last season. They have Joey Bosa who signed a big contract. Um, I don't really know why this defense is not clicking on all cylinders, and it's not because of they a lack of talent. It's, it's I think it's because of a lack of focus and a lack of ability. Um, I feel like the the defense with the Chargers is the main thing that's holding them back, and it's going to hold them back when it comes to playoff time and when it comes um when it comes to the discussion whether or not the Chargers are going to be a formidable team, a formidable team, the AFC in the future. Um, my number six seed is the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Cincinnati Bengals have a great offense, like like the Chargers, and I really do like the offense, um, the, like the talent they have. Whether it's Burrow, whether it's mixing the backfield and the wide receiver core, then you'll get defense, and you'll get the defense side of the ball. You of course you have guys like Jesse Bates, but other than that. The defense is going to be the main reason why this team is not going to succeed and not have a great run in the playoffs this season. That's just, it's obvious. It's obvious. The Bengals are a young team. They're going to be a, they're going to be in consideration f in the AFC for plenty of plenty of years as long as they keep this office together, as long as they rack up talent, whether it's, whether it's in the draft or in free agency and get marquee superstars. The other top teams in the AFC is just not going to win. Um... Number my number fifty in the AFC it has to go to the Tennessee Titans and the Tennessee Titans have had a up and down season all year long. They are so the Titans are so inconsistent that you can't really say that this team can be a real threat in the AFC. You know, Derrick Henry is the Titans offense, and with this Derrick Henry injury, they're exposed. They're exposed. They relied on the passing game too much, and you know, with injured receivers all across the board, you have losses. You have terrible losses to teams like the Jets. You have terrible losses to teams like the Texans. Two mediocre and lackluster teams who have been who have been deemed the worst teams we've seen in the NFL in a very, very long time. You have a desperate passing attack, which leads to had to go and get to desperate and precautionary measures and it's just not working. We could see the Titans in the AFC Championship game, but based on what we see from the Titans right now, that's just not gonna happen. Um my number four seed in the AFC is the Buffalo Bills. And the Buffalo Bills right now were my favorite uh in my life to go to the Super Bowl this season. I look at this Bills team, they have beaten almost everybody that's in their way. And I've seen one team that may possibly be in the way, and that may be Kansas City. And so far this season, we saw how Buffalo pretty much got the formula on how to beat Kansas City. You have talented guys. You have Josh Allen at your QB. He's one of the top QBs in the game today. You have Stephon Diggs, one of the best wide receivers in the game. Then you have other guys like, you know, you bring in Emmanuel Sanders in free agency. You still have Cole Beasley in the slot. In the running back position, you have Zach Moss, and then you have Devin Singletary as well. Two very underrated running backs, in my opinion. Defensively, the Tredavious White season in the injury is it, huge. It's devastating. It's costly. And it's also questionable. And I do believe Josh Young can get the job done this year. I have Buffalo going to the Super Bowl this year. And I feel like that's a very, it's not a bold take, but I feel very confident in my pick with Buffalo going to Super Bowl this year.
My number three seed is the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Kansas City Chiefs have had a bounce back season. Um, earlier on the season, you had some very, very tough losses. And everybody was saying on how the Kansas City Chiefs dynasty was pretty much over before it really even begun. And how the defense was soft and how, you know, they weren't clicking. How Tyron Matthew was to blame and, and so was Darren Sorens and every which were. The Chiefs defense has bounced back and had one of the probably one of the best Cinderella stories um so far this season. And if I see them in Super Bowl this year, it's not gonna be a shock. It's gonna be interesting, but it's not gonna be a shock. But I saw Buff going going to Super Bowl this year. Kansas City wise, I think like offensively, Patrick Mahomes has been taking care of the ball better than what he has been at the beginning of the season, but Offensively, when this offense is clicking, I feel like the Kansas City Chiefs team is unstoppable. Um, but so far, I still have, I still have the Buffalo make the Super Bowl this year. My number two seed is the New England Patriots, like UTD, and I expected the Patriots to be in the playoffs this year. I expect, I expect them to be, um, with or without Cam at the starting QB position. But I did not expect them to be successful, be this successful this season. You were the most active team in the NFL when it comes to free AC. And number for just North Raw pick, you pick up Mac Jones, a uh, Heisman candidate at Alabama. And then, you know, they release Cam. Like, you put Mac Jones in, in the spotlight immediately, and he's handling the ball. He's handling it probably better than any other rookie quarterback we've seen in, the past, in these past couple of years. It's very, it's very evident how great. Bill Belichick, not just the coach, but the general manager constructed this team um, as a whole this season. Defensively, you're one of the best teams in the league. Offensively, you're not, you don't have, you're not the most talented offense, but you can still get points on the board. But uh, the Spacers team, I'm not going to be surprised if they have a deep playoff run this year. But my number one seed this year, just based on the regular season wise, it's, it, it's the Ravens, and Lamar Jackson has won it, has had probably the biggest carrying job offensively that we've seen in the league in like the past decade or so. Right, Lamar Jackson right now he should possibly be your favorite to win MVP, probably behind Tom Brady. He should, and the Ravens right now the number one seed for me just based on the schedule for the remainder of the season, but they're not going to have a deep playoff run. And I say this because you have key, key injuries, whether it's in the backfield with J.K. Dobbs, and, and you handle that situation very, very well offensively. Defensively, at the beginning of the season, you lose Marcus Peters, and you handle that situation very fluently. But now you lose Marlon Humphrey for the rest of the, for the remainder of the season. You lose Marlon Humphrey. So you lose your two top corners in the same season. It's not going to go the, it's not going to be in the, in, it's not going to be in the Baltimore Ravens' favor. This season in the playoffs, it's not defensively, health wise, you have collapsed into your most vulnerable into the most vulnerable position a team can be in when you lose your two best defensive players on that side of the ball outside of Clay's camp. Lamar Jackson has a, Omar Jackson has had a phenomenal season, but it, and it come playoff time when you're gonna have to rely on that run game. It's not going to work. Lamar Jackson can't play both sides of the ball. It's just not going to happen. So, Boston Ravens have had a great season going into the season. I thought they're going to be a disappointing. I thought they're going to be a more disappointing team, just because of those injuries at the game season to J.K. and uh, to Marcus. But now to the with the Maryland injury, and I saw that a couple of days ago. I was like, wow, this is really going to destroy the Ravens season this year. But uh, that's my. List for the AFC, so seven Chargers, six Bengals, five Titans, four Bills, three Chiefs, two Patriots, one Ravens. But if there's one team I would say everybody needs to be on the lookout for, it's probably the Indianapolis Colts. And that's just the one team I feel like everybody needs to have their watch on and have their eyes on for the remainder of the season. Just the great job that Frank Height, that Frank Reich is doing and Jonathan Taylor is having at a, as a running back. Um, the Indianapolis Colts is probably going to be the team to watch in the AFC. So, TD, thanks for being on the show, man. really do appreciate it from you, bro. Thank, thank you for having me on the show.
Well, with that being said, thank you for joining the Sports Center. It's Aiden. If you haven't already, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure to comment down below, and also make sure you hit that button for post notifications for every video and every from channel. And until then, everybody, this is Sports Center. It's Aiden. Until then, everybody, see you on the next episode. Peace. Peace.